when I first met you down at Wasps, you were either training or eating. Yeah. Is that still the case? Um, so I've actually changed a lot of my nutrition. I was eating boiled chicken, brown rice, broccoli, white fish, cold, you know, three months of that. I thought it was terrible. So with my book, I wanted to kind of really get it out there that eating healthy is actually simple, can be really flavoursome, that you don't have to eat this cardboard looking boring food. When I started tracking my food, I thought I had a real good diet, but actually I was massively overeating my fats and I was under eating my protein. And I was like really good at it. So with that understanding about food and what's in what, I've made some better choices. But I think rugby, actually sport in general, has got a long way to go, you know? And do you find that, that almost that discipline is quite rewarding in itself? Do you take a kick out of that? Yeah, I love it. If you want to be in shape, like I'm talking unbelievable low body fat, feeling, you know, a million dollars, very similar to yourself, <laughs> yeah. very low body fat, um, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You're going you're gonna to have to make sure that, you know, you're going to have to suffer a little bit because anything in life that's worth achieving is, is suffering. And otherwise, we'd all be millionaires, we'd all have the bodies we wanted, you know, and what separates people who get the best results are the ones who commit and work hard. Simple questions. Food heaven? Uh, food heaven for me, I think, is two things. Uh, pizza or um, Japanese fusion is a, is a massive Food hell? Food hell, mushrooms. <clears throat> but the worst dish I've ever had to date was in Japan. Um, I went to a restaurant where they served cod sperm. It tasted as, as imagined. You're now Hass the DJ, Hass the nutritionist, Hass the author. Yeah. So the, the, the rugby mystery. player could go away, but yeah. all the other things just pick up. Uh, yes, uh, yes and no. I still think the day I hang up my boots will be uh, a massive day for me. I think it will take me in a lot of adjustment time. You know, people laugh at me with the DJing stuff, but one of the biggest things that Sorry, I'm not meant, <laughs> yeah, to laugh. not meant to laugh, Hal. Um, is that uh, when you've a lot of sportsmen finish playing, they get massive, they get a lot of depression because they, they miss the camaraderie of the team, they miss performing, they miss the adulation, and they miss getting to do something. DJing for me is an opportunity to perform. The last time I played out was for 4,000 people, I headlined for these young farmers. It takes the edge off not playing because yeah. I've got to look at that. At some point in you know, the next couple of years, maybe next week, I'll have to retire. And my concern is that so many players, especially young, all they know is rugby, all they want to be is rugby players, they're glued to their phones 24 hours a day, they finish training, they go and play Fortnite, they don't have the social skills, they, you know, they're, they're molly coddled with the media, so they just say like boring answers all the time. Yeah. And then suddenly one day someone goes, you know what, your knee's gone, actually I don't think you can do that anymore. What do you do? It is business and it's becoming way more ruthless and you've got to remember that you're a commodity and as soon as you don't serve your purpose, you are sexually dust. Saturday morning, a lot of people watching this on their sofa, maybe reaching for the second bacon sandwich. What's your message to people post-Christmas who are still trying to shift a bit of timber? What are the simple breakthroughs? Okay, simple things to do. Uh, start tracking what you're eating. Give yourself five days of tracking religiously what you're doing. And then understand that if you want to shift that timber, you're going to cut 500 calories off that or 250 calories off that amount. Give it two weeks, go again. Look at doing easy training. Do not put your shoes on and start trying to go for a run. It is boring, it is hell, it will kill the joints, and unless you want to rig like Mo Farah, it's not really <laughs> going to get you into the best shape. Get a plan and stick to it. Don't come into work and go, I'm try CrossFit, because Sharon will say, we well, don't do CrossFit, you want to do uh, F45. And then someone else will don't do F45, you want to do what bike sessions. Or you don't want to do that, you want to do running. And before you know it, you're doing a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and you're getting completely lost, fed up, and confused. Find a plan, give it six weeks, and if you haven't got results over four to six weeks, can it and find something else, but stick to the plan, do what they say.